Back at the sanctuary in Kent, headbutts are also part of goat speak. But the grammar is somewhat simple compared to bleeding. Heidi has been at Buttercups for six years. She was taken in because her former owners weren't taking proper care of her. <laughs> Unlike her sponsor, who visits her every Tuesday. Heidi! Baby girl! Baby girl! Heidi! <laughs> Heidi! At the sound of her sponsor's voice, Heidi comes straight over. This volunteer pays for Heidi's food and lodging. She keeps Heidi's quarters spick and span. It's okay. <coughs> Heidi doesn't leave her side. That's a good girl, aren't you? That's a good girl. There, Danny girl. This close relationship has evolved through language and physical contact. But how much do goats actually communicate? With us and with each other? To find out, the zoologists are giving Heidi a sound test. During this new experiment, bleeding will be played through a speaker. And Heidi's heart rate will be analyzed. The broadcast begins. <coughs> Heidi reacts at the first sound. <coughs> this bleeding was recorded when a goat could see its food arriving and was experiencing a positive feeling. <coughs> then Heidi gets used to the sound. <coughs> and goes back to her grazing. But when a different sound is played, she becomes more attentive. This time, it's the sound of a goat that is frustrated at being isolated from other goats. Heidi looks around to see who is making this troublesome noise. This reaction proves that she is conscious of the emotional message in the bleeding. Analysis of her heart rate confirms this observation. It slows when the cry is repeated and accelerates when the bleeding is more negative. A sign that other goats' emotions are contagious. Both in England and on other continents. In southern Morocco, on the edge of the Sahara, is a Berber encampment. Here too, every day begins with a chorus of animals keen for their freedom. These cries reinforce the cohesion between members of the herd. Especially amongst worried mothers and their adventurous offspring. In this herd, births are not controlled by the goat herds. Males and females live together year-round, and their language is made up of strange amorous sounds. This is a billy in heat. But the female is not yet receptive. She indicates her disapproval by sneezing. In the world of goats, this is a warning.
the billy continues his pursuit to encourage the nanny to come into heat. He has an intense desire to procreate, driven by a high level of hormones. And he's not the only one. This young billy goat uses words and actions. He tries to interest her by striking her with his hoof. It doesn't work. The goats are too busy looking for something to eat in this harsh environment. The Sous Plain is very arid. It is suited to animals whose physiology has adapted to drought conditions. Camels have fatty reserves on their humps that they can transform into water if needed. It's also how they regulate their body temperature. And having a flexible, two-meter-long neck means they can reach leaves growing higher up. Goats aren't so lucky. So how do they survive in the desert? For water, options are limited. The goat herd brings in tanks of water to feed the animals. But they need to find their own food. Let's follow this straggler who is looking for something to eat. It looks like a challenge, given how infertile the land seems. This ochre color kid returns to her mother. The herd seems to have an idea. They are heading for an argon plantation. These forests are unique because the argon tree only grows in Morocco. It looks a little like an olive tree. The argan fruits fall to the ground, to the delight of the animals who gobble them up and spit out the seeds. There is not enough fruit to satisfy them. But the leaves would fill them up. To reach them, the goats follow their instincts from their past in the mountains. They turn into acrobats to feed in the tree. Down on the ground, the ochre-colored kid seems to be at a disadvantage. She doesn't know how to climb yet, but she's determined not to give up. At last, As she eats her fill, 
She forgets that this is the first time she's been up so high. She calls out to her mother in vain. She's safely down. Demonstrating a high level of corporal awareness, this goat performs this balancing act for several hours each day. Thanks to their extremely sensitive lips, they can snaffle up the argan leaves without hurting themselves on the thorns. The flip side of the coin is that these forests are now being overgrazed. As the locals say, the goat is the poor man's cow, but when there's enough of them, they raise the forest to the ground.